uh, all this Comey business and the firing of James Comey, it's a hugely important story, but we can't lose sight of the fact that Republicans continue to do other horrible things as well. For example, they're still working on their so-called American Health Care Act, the AAHCA, better known as Trump Care, which is in fact uh, something that qualifies them to be a real life death panel because people will die if this bill becomes law. Now, last week, everybody was celebrating on the Democratic side because they took a vote that's going to hurt them uh, during their re-elections. And by they, I mean Republicans in, in the House of Representatives. And it will never become law, they said, because Republicans in the Senate won't allow it. Well, I was kind of feeling more cautious than that at the time, because you can never go wrong uh, assuming that Republicans under the direction of Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will do the most horrible thing available to them at any given time. So I did a little uh, research and calculation. And I, by the way, ran my numbers by uh, one of uh, one of the show's friends, Dean Baker, before publishing them because I wanted to make sure somebody guessed, second guessed my math. My math was good. I did this. I wanted to know how many people were going to die in order to give each rich person in America a tax break. Uh, so in other words, how many ghosts were going to be sitting around the table with each rich person as they enjoyed the tax break that Trump and the other Republicans want to give them under the AHCA or Trump Care? So I did some math uh, and I'll go into the math in a minute. But first of all, let me give you the bottom line number. The 400 richest Americans who make on average about $300 million a year and will get on average about a $7 million tax break if Trump care becomes law will be responsible or the Republicans will be responsible on their behalf for more or less 10 people dying each and every year to give them their tax break. They will have 10 lives on their uh, moral consciences for each of those tax breaks. Now, I can go over the math with you. I don't want to get too nerdy about it. Uh, let's start with this. Uh, back in the uh, back a long while ago, there was a great mystery writer named Richard Matheson. He wrote uh, I Am Legend and a lot of other great stories, uh, many of which became Twilight Zone episodes. One of those stories was about a married couple, a stranger shows up at their door one day and gives, shows them a box with a button on it. And he, and he says, if you press the button, somebody you don't know will die. Somebody you don't know will die and I will give you $100,000. Now the couple argues about it. One of them eventually decides, I could use the money. It's somebody I don't know. What do I care? presses the button, and then there's an ironic twist ending, which I won't spoil for you, but you know you can imagine all sorts of twist endings coming out of this. Uh, I kind of think of anybody who supports any rich person who's going to get a tax break out of uh, the Trump care bill and doesn't fight to uh, oppose it is kind of in the same moral position as that couple pressing the button. They're taking money for the deaths of others uh, and they have a moral obligation not to do that. So, okay, well you say, well, how do you not do that? Morally speaking, they're gonna get the money either way. My answer would be this, take the tax break you're getting should this horrible bill come to pass and give it to progressive causes, particularly to organizations that are fighting to unseat Republicans from power and revoke this horrendous nightmare of a bill. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about how I got up with this number, okay? There are a couple good studies that show how many people will die if the Affordable Health Care Act is repealed. I took those studies as my baseline. Uh, then I took the amount of money that was going back to people uh, in tax breaks. And basically I go over, I wrote a piece about it for ourfuture.org where I describe it in greater length. But basically what I did then is I just divide. So I divide the number of deaths by the number uh, of a total amount of tax breaks and then broke it out per person. So, okay, just so you know, by the way, 
uh, if this bill passes, according to a low end, fairly conservative estimate, conservative in this case, meaning not being exaggerated, nearly half a million people will die over the next 10 years because they don't have, because they've been deprived of health insurance under this bill. Now, I don't know what you think, but I think a half a million voluntary deaths in order to give rich people a tax break is a horror story of unbelievable proportions. But that's what we're looking at right now. If you don't want to be, if you're a wealthy American listening to this and this bill passes and you don't want to be the moral equivalent of the couple in that story, then my recommendation to you is to get ready to find some progressive causes and we'll be happy to help you here at the zero hour that you can support that will keep, uh, that will fight to undo this horrible bill. And a closing thought, if you believe that political decisions have life and death consequences as this one will, we have to, first of all, stop Trump care from passing so that people who have, for example, Medicaid now and other health insurance don't have to die or be sicker or suffer in other ways. And if you believe that political choices have life and death consequences, as I do, I would add to this, it is also time for you and me to fight for Medicare for all. Because just as passing Trump care would cause some people to lose their lives, the fact that the Affordable Care Act is better but imperfect means that people are already losing their lives under the Affordable Care Act because they're not getting the insurance they need. And the only, and more importantly, they're not getting the health care services they need because sometimes even with insurance, you can't afford the health care treatment you need. So my word to you is this in order to hold all human life sacred, in order to affirm that healthcare is a human right, we need to fight Trump care and fight to pass Medicare for all so that there are no more needless deaths in the United States of America.